What is the greatest comeback to our insult you've ever heard? Hire a guy subscribe now, or I will steal your purse. Joe Pine interviewing Frank Zappa Joe, I guess your long hair makes you a woman. FZ, I guess your wooden leg makes you a table. How does a dude named Pine have a wooden leg? What if it's mahogany or oak? Hahaha <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Good stuff. Not even clever, but one of my favorite Zappa lines, because it's so outlandish, is may your shit come to life and kiss you on the face. Nobody looks good with brown lipstick was that just Zappa's way of saying, don't be a kiss ass. During WW1, Switzerland had a tiny standing army, but they were very skilled marksmen. Wilhelm II of Germany asked what 250k Swiss troops would do if he decided to invade with 500k German troops. The Swiss said, shoot twice and go home. And that, good sir, is how getting Swiss cheese got the definition we know today. It sounds right but I don't know enough about cheese to dispute it. Switzerland is actually neutral now, in part because they were such good fighters. Many European countries hired Swiss mercenaries to fight for them. At least, that's what I heard in a YouTube video. Yeah, but nowadays is just to avoid getting wrecked by any enemy Switzerland might face, since it is in the middle of Europe, and with a very small army. Switzerland is also not worth taking. There's nothing there to justify losing hundreds of thousands of men in the Alpine passes to Swiss artillery and marksmen, even if you do take the country. Is Switzerland a country that has demo set up on all major entrances slash exits and enough bomb shelters for the entire population? Yes, there used to be explosives in every bridge and tunnel in the mountains and close to the border, but not anymore. Indeed. It should take the troops maybe 12 hours to reinstall the explosives. 18th century British radical politician John Wilkes was told in Parliament by a political opponent Sir, I do not know whether you will die on the gallows or of the pox. Wilkes shot back with that depends, my lord, on whether I embrace your lordship's principles or your mistress. He's basically calling dude a scumbag and saying his girl is a dirty hoe. Or, in the words of classical poet DMX, you whack, you're twisted, your girl's a hoe you broke. The kid ain't yours, and Arabadinos. Your old man say you stupid, you be like, so. I love my baby mother, I never let her go. Wilkes shot back with that depends, my lord, on whether I embrace your lordship's principles or your mistress. The lords observed with snide delight, he glanced, ashamed, from left to right. He stood to make his own reply, I know you are, but what am I? I wanna act, like I'm sophisticated enough to get this, but I'm absolutely not. The box, a slang for disease, or smallpox, or something equally nasty that would kill you, or hurt you real bad. The gallows, death by hanging. So he, Wilkes, basically said, if I follow your principles, I'll be hanged, if I fuck your side chick, I'll die of standard or some weird disease. Implying that his political opponent basically has no morals and his side chick is a disease ridden woman. My grandparents used to bicker. My grandmother generally came out on top, as she was fierier. One time though, she was asking him to do a bunch of stuff, and he muttered, if you'd lose some weight, you could do it yourself. She fixed her gaze on him, and glad I'm thinking of getting rid of about 200 pounds of useless fat immediately. He replied you're going to cut off your foot. Man. Nobody because like old married couples because they've had decades to perfect their craft. Also they know practically everything about each other including what will really hit home. Also how to produce insults that are scathing in the eyes of others but not actually damaging to each other. If they truly wanted to dig into each other, they would have figured out how to make each other want a divorce by now. Someone yelled out in a warmat, I'm not ashamed of who I am. Another voice echoed back, that's your parents job. Back in middle school I was at Walmart with a friend of mine looking for pants. Being a tomboy, I like to wear baggy boys pants, nor did I wear Macoop. Another kid came up to me, and snarkily asked PFFT, what are you, a boy or a girl? And without missing a beat I responded why, do you think him hot? He just got flustered and walked away mumbling obscenities. This was the 90s, so that gender question actually was insulting to my 14 year old brain. Not the greatest, but I still hold pride for my quick wit back then. Too bad that's all gone now. For some reason everyone in high school thought I was a lesbian. 
so a straight dude in my grade walked by me and was trying to make fun of me slash gay bash and said well at least I don't like girls. I just kinda stared at him and waited for it to click. Saw a clip of a stand up comedian the other day and he says something along the lines of the first time I had sex it was terrible, the first time I had sex. And a woman chimes in with you mean yesterday? Crowd laughs for a while, and while the comedian is waiting for them to calm down you can see the gears turn in his head. Once it gets down to basically a few chuckles, he just says glad you remember, and the crowd just lost their shit. It was amazing. Okay now we need the source of this clip. I used to work with this like 70 year old woman. She was a supervisor, and one day one of the ladies who worked with us told this old lady to kiss my ass and the old lady replied where do I start? You're so fat your crack goes all the way up your back. Gran gran, how many times do we have to tell you? We are not a crematorium. I ask my mother why she always wears macup despite being in her 40s. She told me she wears macup, so she doesn't look like me edit. I was 9 savage. You deserve that. A guy makes fun of his bald friend by rubbing his head and saying, Wow, your head is as smooth as my wife's bottom. The friend also rubs his head and says, Wow, you're right. That had to hurt. Quiet guy in my art class got called queer bait. He replied with, If I'm the bait then you're the catch of the day. My 10 year old cousin was pushed aside by an older student at school who also felt the need to call him a gay child. My cousin told him not to get his hopes up. You wish became the kryptonite to gay jokes in my elementary school for a while growing up. Do your parents know you're gay? My first exposure to a trick question. Do you arrest? One of my co-workers was cold calling customers, trying to get appointments to drum up business. One of them told him to go fuck his hand, and he responded with I've got that penciled in 4-3. I should be done by 4, if you'd like to come in for an appointment then. The guy laughed his ass off, and ended up coming in for the appointment. I had a coworker, also in sales, also cold calling, a take no shit middle aged woman. When people hung up on us, sometimes we'd call back and play dumb. Often people would realize they were being rude, this is more business to business. Anyhow, this lady couldn't help herself, so she'd call back, feign the same polite friendliness, and say hey sorry, I think we were rudely disconnected. Edit, some context, business to business cold calling, isn't the same as cold calling people's houses to sell a vacuum. Some industries don't advertise on TV, and when you're selling a service, rather than a product, and it's custom, it's not at all normal or sound business advice, to do all of your own research on Google. Not all cold callers are hoping to find someone in a vulnerable state to trick them into an impulse buy. We would make an introduction cold to get to the appropriate decision maker, but the deal wouldn't close for another 6 to 9 months, usually, never the day of the cold call. People rarely hung up on us, maybe once a month, and when they did, it was always the gatekeeper. That's who she would say this to, and while it certainly wasn't good sales technique, Decision makers generally care more about their bottom line than their receptionists feelings over being called rude for being rude. Contrary to this thread, introducing yourself to someone over the phone is like or thing people do and the person on the other end who hangs up is literally being paid for the sole purpose of facilitating such communication. Also, assuming everyone here is employed, your paycheck relies on one of three things, salespeople, advertising, or taxpayers. Receptionists get to pretend that's not the case, same as many of you, but their boss knows that they too rely on sales, advertising, and or taxpayers, without which we would have no small business or competition of any sort. What I'm saying is, if you hate salespeople, refuse to work for anyone who uses them. I'll wait. Let's not be myopic. In all likelihood, a salesperson helped you get your last paycheck, and you helped a salesperson get this. Your favorite products and your favorite company came into existence by annoying people sometimes. We're all in this together, no man is an island, and it's really not that hard to treat people with respect. Winston Churchill, of course. Lady Nancy Astor, Winston, if you were my husband, I'd poison your tea. Churchill, Nancy, if I were your husband, I'd drink it. Winston, you are drunk, disgustingly drunk. 
Yes, madam, but you're fat. And when morning comes, I shall be sober. Romeo I think he said tomorrow I will be sober, but you will still be ugly. That all reddit guys don't forget. Please subscribe or I will steal your purse.